Hello. Uh, before I go on to the next module, allow me to correct a small mistake that I made. Uh, let me just uh, do it on the board. I found that k1 square equal to k0 square minus 4 pi rho b. Now k1 square by k0 square will be equal to 1 minus 4 pi rho b by k0 square. So n is equal to k1 in the medium k1 by k0 equal to and k0 in the vacuum it is given by twice pi by lambda square so it goes to 1 minus 4 pi rho b divided by 4 pi square lambda square and then n square is this equal to 1 minus sorry, lambda square by pi rho b this is what I what n square and this is a small I said this is small and 1 minus epsilon to the power half is equal to 1 minus half epsilon applying that I get n equal to 1 minus lambda square by 2 lambda square by 2 pi rho b can I go back there so this is what I obtain from assuming the k changes as the neutron travels in the medium energy was e0 and here I assume the energy is e1 or e prime so now I also showed you that the refractive index depends in case of x-rays it depends on electron density in case of neutrons, let me emphasize, it depends on coherent scattering length density plus for a magnetized medium, it depends on a magnetic, scat magnetic scattering length which is added or subtracted to the nuclear part depending on whether the medium is polarized and the neutron polarization is parallel to it or anti-parallel to it. Now quickly I'll tell you polarized neutron and extra neutron reflectometry as I told you they are parallel techniques complementary techniques and it depends on neutron nucleus interaction in case of polarized neutron and unpolarized neutron reflectometry and for polarized neutron reflectometry with unpaired magnetic moment. So that means uh, take a simple example let me take iron it's a 3D group magnetic material so every iron has got a unfilled shell which giving is giving rise to its magnetic moment so with that is the neutron can interact with the nucleus with with the B coherent plus it also interacts with the unpaired electron so we get information on number density through coherent scattering length density and also magnetic moment density from polarized neutron reflectometry. In case of X-ray reflectometry, it is X-ray and the charge cloud interaction and information on density through electron scattering length density. So that means on the same sample, I can use coherent scattering density in case of neutrons to get the density of the medium and electron scattering length density I can translate it to physical density and this is an unique te technique that using these two I will show you later I can actually obtain the density of medium 
which has got two elements or a density of a binary phase, binary uh, two component medium. So this is a quick comparison between polarized neutron reflectometry and X-ray reflectometry. Now let me just try to figure out what should be the reflectivity of a medium and what should be the critical angle for a medium that I discussed earlier. Now this is what I want to show you that for a specular reflectometry you can see there is an incoming energy and incident beam, there is a reflected beam and there is a transmitted beam in the medium. This is what we did even in schools when we did about talked about refraction. Now here because the medium has less than one reflectivity then it has got a total external reflection and the critical angle for reflection. So I will just derive it for you. So N refractive index is given by uh, my if I consider this angle from here from the surface and not with the normal then it will be cos theta theta 1 or theta i theta 1 theta 2 theta 2 cos theta 2 so n is given by cos theta 1 by cos theta 2 it is exactly same if I had measured the angle from it it would have been sin theta 1 by sin theta 2 now n equal to cos theta 1 by cos theta 2 and when this angle is equal to critical angle then cos theta 2 becomes 0 the beam starts propagating exactly along the interface so in that case cos theta 2 is theta 2 equal to 0 and theta 1 I call it theta 1 equal to critical angle theta c when that happens then n is equal to cos theta c so cos theta c and equal to 1 minus lambda square by 2 pi rho b for neutron and cos theta c under the assumption that theta c is almost equal to 0 it is 1 minus theta c square by 2 equal to 1 minus lambda square by 2 pi rho b so from here theta c or the equal to lambda root over rho b by pi so please note this thing the critical angle is decided by the scattering by the scattering scattering length density now this answers our question that how we can find out density of a medium by measurement of reflection angle so one is that measurement of the critical angle theta c so this is what so now theta c x rays is by the same method I can write is that lambda equal lambda square root of this is classical electron radius electron density by pi square root of that and theta c neutron is scattering length density of neutrons divided by pi so the critical angle depends on electron density in case of x rays and coherent scattering length density in case of neutrons but so far in this expression I have not added magnetism otherwise it will come as b coherent plus or minus b of m now how do i evaluate the reflectivity at an interface so in case of x rays it should be as we did in our bachelor's degree that the electric field in case of x rays e and dE by dz should be continuous 
इन केस ऑफ मैटर वेव मैटर वेव लाइक न्यूट्रॉन्स इट शुड बी द वेव फंक्शन साइ एंड इट्स डेरिवेटिव डी साई बाई डी जेड वाई लेट मी जस्ट शो यू सो आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट एन इंटरफेस इन विच रिफ्लेक्शन इज टेकिंग प्लेस स्पेकुलर रिफ्लेक्शन सो आई हैव गोट ए इंसिडेंट बीम ई टू दी पॉर आई के जेड आई के जेड I have got a reflect. I have considered that it is amplitude is unique. Then, if R is the reflectivity coefficient, you have got R to the minus I K Z, and I have got going in the medium T to the power I. Uh, this is since I am considering the Z component only. I will write I Q one Z. I'll explain to you i q 2 i q 1 z and in the medium i q 2 z why so let me explain to you this is the incident beam this is the outgoing beam i have just shifted it so for this reflection this is the z component this is the incident beam the reflected beam i shifted there shifted there so this is the q in the medium and same thing is true for the scattered beam now i call it q1 which is in vacuum in case of reflectometry in snails snails law the along the plane component they remain continuous the only component of wave vector which is changing is the z component which i'm calling it q1 here and q2 in the medium and i'm translating this propagation as a propagation only in z direction because that is the only vector which is changing from one medium to another so now i have got incident beam e to the power i q1 z plus reflected beam to the power minus i q1 z why why i minus i q1 z because this beam is, i have taken this beam is propagating in plus z direction if that is the case then this beam is propagating in minus z direction this is propagating in this direction the z component only x component uh, x y component i am not bothered so this is the if this is the plus z direction this is a minus z direction so the incident beam unit vector unit amplitude reflection amplitude and this is the propagation and for the transmitted it is t e to the power i q2 z so now i have got the incident beam e to the power i q1 z plus e to the power minus i q1 z and i have to match it with t e to the power i q2 z so if i consider at z equal to 0 then 1 there r plus r should be equal to t this is equation 1 if i consider d psi by dz d psi by dz you can see it comes to i q1 plus r minus i i i q1 r so i q1 to the power i q1 z Minus i q one q to the power minus i q one z one r here equal to 
टी आई क्यू टू इट इज दर आई क्यू टू जेड टू सॉल्व दिस इक्वेश आई हैव पुट माई ओरिजिन एट द इंटरफेस वेन जेड इक्वल टू जीरो दैट गिव मी वन इट गिव मी एट जेड इक्वल टू जीरो वन प्लस आर इक्वल टू टी एंड द अदर पार्ट इज हियर आई इफ आई पुट जेड इक्वल टू जीरो आई विल कैंसल फ्रॉम बुद्ध साइड सो इट विल कम टू क्यू वन माइनस क्यू वन आर इक्वल टू क्यू टू टी सो दिस इज फ्रॉम कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ साइ अक्रॉस द इंटरफेस आई हैव पुट द इंटरफेस एट जेड इक्वल टू जीरो जेड इक्वल टू जीरो दिस इज डी साई बाई डी जेड एट जेड इक्वल टू जीरो इफ आई सॉल्व दिस टू इक्वेश इट्स वेरी इजी टू डू वॉट आई गेट आर इक्वल टू क्यू वन माइनस क्यू टू ओपन क्यू वन plus q2 this is the reflection amplitude and this is what i have written here and this is very easy if you write q1 equal to 4 pi by lambda sin theta and uh, all those expressions you will get this expression for r and reflected intensity is equal to r into r star for a reflected intensity so this is the reflected intensity for an interface between vacuum and a medium of infinite thickness infinite thickness thickness so so and the reflectivity pattern that i will get in q space basically i will be studying reflectivity as a function of angle if it's a reactor source or as a function of wavelength as well as angle if it is a spallation neutron source but we will be probing the q space and the reflected intensity and i just show you the experimental result for a highly polished silicon surface this is how it looks like so please you need to digest this that since there is a critical angle as i showed you earlier that up to a critical angle the reflected intensity is 1 and beyond that the in reflected intensity falls and actually when the q is very large it falls as 1 by q to the power 4 why i will come to it later so it falls rapidly where at large q and up to a certain critical angle theta c it is 1 now this critical angle is a signature of the density of the medium because that critical angle is given by lambda root over rho b by pi or in case of x rays lambda root over rho e r e by pi so x rays will give me the electron density if i measure it with neutrons it will give me scattering length density in this case it is x rays and this tells you what is the density of the medium from whose interface we get this reflectivity pattern with this i stop today i'll carry on in the next module next lecture with discussions on reflectometry